Right, so I'm here on the boat. It is September the 28th of 2023. And I wanted to do a little bit of update about my open plotter setup. Right behind me there, there's a huge crane putting rocks on the wall here. So there might be some noise in the background. Hopefully not, uh, we'll see how this goes. This is a two year update. The Raspberry Pi has been on, the, on for two years. Uh, before that, there was a Raspberry Pi 3B on for a year, year and a half before that. Uh, but this 4 has been on for two years. This screen has been here since um, February of 2022, for the whole of season of 2022, and then the whole of season of 2023. Remember, we're in the Great Lakes here. I'm in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, which means that the boat comes out in about October. So this boat's coming out on October 14th, and uh, it goes in again in about May. So the season is from May till October. Currently using Open Plotter 2 still. Uh, maybe this winter I'll upgrade to Open Plotter 3, but for now I'm using Open Plotter 2. I have, I have a Pi 4 with 4 gigs of RAM. Basically, I run it all the time. I run my system all the time. I have my CTOC devices, so I have uh, depth and wind and speed over ground, or speed through water, sorry. Um, sent to the Pi via CTOC 1. Also, I have my uh, VHF uh, integrated as well. I tried to save a, a video when I was on a race a few weeks ago um, to show the screen working, and I really, I failed because basically uh, the camera didn't catch the, uh, the, the, what the screen actually were, was showing, so what I was highlighting on the screen. There's the, there's the screen. So, connected to this video, I'm going to show you a uh, clip from a, from when it rained on a different race that we were on. And as you can see, the screen works perfect, and that was after two torrential pour, pours on top of the screen. And it works just great, and, and even the touch screen worked even when it was raining. So, there you go. And what we'll do is we'll take we'll just look through what I've got coming in because on top of all the normal instruments I also have instruments associated with uh, the engine so I have engine oil pressure I have RPM uh, which I, but I'm not going to start the engine so you won't see that uh, and I have uh, engine water or cooling and various cooling from the engine so like raw water intake and things like that so I'm going to try and show this as best I can. Here is the screen. Now this screen, there is an earlier video uh, about this screen. Um, now the screen um, is a thousand nit and it has an independent uh, screen uh, um, brightness control, which is here. Uh, so I can adjust the brightness up and down. So if you if you watch the screen right now, as I lower it you can see I can adjust the screen brightness I'm gonna set it back to maximum uh, which is there and my experience of this in any in any sunlight conditions you can see the screen just fine um, it's really really good it really does not um, does not suffer from any sort of like uh, screen glare or anything like that the screen itself is um, is optically bonded and anti-glare so it has less reflection in general. Um, and I've used this in heavy torrential rain. Uh, there should be a couple of videos popping up uh, or a couple of uh, scenes popping up now where, where we're in heavy torrential rain and the screen was ju working just fine.
we're expecting some rain. Even with wet hands, I could still use the touch screen. And if you watch the touch screen, you can see that uh, it, it moves. Now, you know, uh, there is some delay and that is Raspberry Pi based. And you can see there's a boat that's just gone out like there. And you can see that boat on the AIS there. If I touch it, you get the information uh, about what boat it is. And it really smells badly of diesel at the moment. but. There we go, it, it, it works for that and you can see the AIS target. Now, this is open CPN obviously and it's running in tablet mode. So it is supposed to be better for, for you to select things on the screen. However, there is no multi zoom or anything like that. The, the zoom in, zoom out buttons do work. So if I tap on the zoom in, zoom out, you'll see it does zoom in. And if I tap on these buttons here, so if I, I want my route planner to come up, I can pick my route here uh, and everything is, is fine. Uh, what I can't do is I can't plot a route with my finger here. I, I, I usually go downstairs and do it at the nav station where there is a, a mouse, basically. Uh, on this side, uh, on this side here, we have Kip. Now, just to show you that it's not the screen, that's the issue with, with regard to multi-touch. If I do that, we get we we get perfect uh, zoom in, zoom out. Uh, so as you can see, and and look how fast it is. It's it, it's pretty fast, right? So that's it works perfectly well. So it's an open open CPN issue rather than a uh, touch screen issue. Um, just wanted to make that that clear. Now, what I have on my screen here is I have SOG, which is, you know, a GPS uh, speed. I also have speed, which comes from my, um, from my uh, uh, gauges, from my um, CTOC one. And then if I set a course, I, you'd see VMG, uh, velocity made good to course. Uh, apparent wind angle and true wind angle are there. Obviously I'm stationary right now and I'm on the mooring. So uh, those are both the same. Uh, the heading heading's moving around a little bit and the heading is based on on gps that i've got here uh so it does fluctuate as we're moving in just sort of really small increments um and then here i have the tr average true wind speed which the reason i'm not sailing is because it's like four miles per hour so and you can see that also here 3.8 uh on the on the the wind gauge so this is from the wind gauge right here um I can go to the next screen and in the my next screen uh, and I do re really do need to go uh, to do some optimization here uh, but um, the this is my temperatures so I've got cabin temperature and cockpit temperature as you see it is the end of September so uh, we do have 64 degrees in Milwaukee uh, but also you can see the boat memory is only about 25 26% uh, right so that's a this is a four megabyte oh sorry four gigabyte uh, device um, so I'm only using about a gig of RAM on this machine uh, boat temperature or so, sorry uh, uh, pie temperature is 118 GPU temperature is is 119 and I've used about 15% of the the SD card uh, so I have a 64 in there uh, and I'm only using a bit of it really I will this winter. I think I'll change over to uh, an S, um, SSD um, and see how that goes. Coolant temp. I have my coolant, and then I have my raw water intake. Uh, steer direction is something that I, 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 I uh, use uh, to tell me which way to steer when I'm um, when we're racing, and I'll show you that in more detail here. So this is uh, my race screen. Uh, now this here tells you to steer to port and this tells you to steer to starboard. And if you're bang in the middle, it'll say zero, zero and you, you know, you're on course and it gives you speed over ground. This is, so this is, I'm bearing to waypoint and then your wind equipment. Usually when I'm on this screen, I don't look at the map. I'm just basically concentrating on keeping the, 
the, the steering in the center. Uh, but this is a sort of special screen for me to race with. This is my battery. So one of the other things I've got is I've got a couple of uh, ESP32s and this is one of them. Uh, one of the ESP32, it basically looks at uh, the batteries. So as you can see right now, the start battery is at about 97%. Now they're paralleled right now, they're all connected together. Um, so um, what's happening really is that the start battery is depleting a little bit quicker than the others. But really, if you look at the numbers, it's 12 and a half. Um, 12 and a half volts or 12.6 volts is 12.56 uh, volts it's not really that much different um, they're all about the same and I've got the temperatures of all the batteries and the voltages of all the batteries are on those gauges uh, and then um, I also have how many uh, amps of current is being uh, drawn so there's a little graph there that shows the, the current there's a load of geese going uh, north funnily a uh, load of uh, Canadian geese going north. I think they must be lost. Um, I think it's the type of time of the year where they all get lost because there was a pelican, uh, not pelican, a, uh, a load of um, flamingos in Port Washington last week, which is like 20 miles north of here. So I think they're all being a bit funny right now. All right, that's the, that's the batteries. Uh, after the batteries, this is the uh, screen I use when I'm on the motor. So it tells me the coolant temperature, it tells me the, the, the uh, temperature of the exhaust barrel, the tem temperature of the exhaust manifold, uh, also the alternator temperature. I do have a float sensor in the bilge. Um, so we have that where it says bilge clear. Uh, and I use Matt uh, Bailey's uh, code to get that working. Thanks, Matt. Uh, that was awesome um, and I use the same uh, same float that he does uh, as well uh, so check his channel out he's he's uh, got an awesome set of uh, videos out there um, also on here I've got the oil pressure which is showing up at 0.17 of a bar right now the engines turned off so so you're not likely to see very much um, and then oil temperature gives me the temperature of the oil as well engines off so no rpm but this is where I would do all the engine stuff. And then back, and that's uh, back to the, uh, the the main page that I use. And really, this is normally what I sail with most of the time. So I just wanted to give uh, an update on uh, on how it's been going, how, how, it's, how it's been working for the last couple of years. And I will say um, that one of the things that you need to be aware of when setting up a system like this is that uh, HDMI and USB are not really designed to be in wet areas. So I would suggest that you do whatever you can to waterproof those devices. We're coming to the end of the, uh, the 2023 uh, season and uh, this, there's only a few sales left in the books for this year. Uh, I've still got a load of footage, I'm still behind. Uh, so this might be way past the end of the season when I uh, put this video out. Uh, but hopefully you enjoy it. Um, it's really a focus on, on the screen's two year or two season anniversary, if you like, and, and uh, how it's performed for, the, for the, the two years and also how the Raspberry Pi 4 has performed. Um, and it, all in all, it's, it's, been, uh, it's been really good. I, I can't see a fault in it. Uh, when I bought this boat back in uh, 2019, uh, I, um, I saw it had equipment on it that was all from the 1996, like these gauges, for instance, that they're all original Raymarine uh, gauges here, um, ST50s, and they're not even Raymarine, they're, they're uh, prior to Raymarine, they're um, auto helm. Uh, so, um, so yeah, I, I thought I, I was going to have a big bill coming. Uh, to replace all these uh, devices. Um, but I thought, well, let's try the uh, DIY option. If I can do the whole thing for much less money, then, then that's better. And really all in all, including everything, the screen, the Pi, all the other bits and pieces, all the interconnects, all the wiring, I'm probably only, uh, including the screen downstairs as well, and also the Mayana, uh, 
I am probably in for for less than $1,400, I would say. Uh, the big fish just jumped behind me. So big salmon, the salmon are running. So uh, they're uh, jumping away behind me. Anyway, please, uh, please like and subscribe and hit the bell. And uh, if you've got any comments, I'd love to hear them. You know, I, I like to listen, or sorry, I like to read those comments and respond uh, and, and provide any help I can. So uh, please uh, comment if you, if you want to. Thanks. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next year.